uh, welcome again to the EAU TV and the EU Uronco platform. We are here from the main uh, EAU Congress uh, in Paris and it is my pleasure to welcome to you Dr. Geraldine Pignon from France and Professor Peter Wicklund from Sweden. Today there was a very interesting session about uh, rectal lesion and rectal complication during pelvic surgery. So today we will discuss a bit how to prevent and eventually how to handle this complication that can occur during radical prostatectomy. Just to give some data, in 2023, 2024, I would say these are rare occasions. They tend to occur in, let's say, 0.1 or less percent of uh, robotic radical prostatectomies. Things change a bit in terms of uh, salvage radical prostatectomy where in the historical series we had very high rates and now more recent series have rates which are around, let's say, 1%. So I think we can discuss two main points about rectal lesion. One is about prevention and one is about handling, so when the lesion has happened. So do you have any suggestion or uh, any tips on how you prevent in your daily practice uh, this complication. Do you want to go first? No. Yes. <laughs> um, the, the, the more important plane is the posterior plane during prostatectomy because uh, this is during this time that we, 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 we had the possibility to have a rectal injury, even if it's rare, uh, for patients who are previously exposed to radiation, uh, and salvage surgery, the, the incidence is higher. But in this plane, it is very important to be close to the prostate, and uh, perhaps mm -hmm. you have some tips and tricks to find the plane. Yeah, I mean, that's, of course, yeah. It, it, you have to be very careful then when you do, especially after radiation, because then the plane mm -hmm. is not so clear. Most other patients, you can get the plane. So. Uh, the, the, the most common area where you have the problem is close to the apex of the prostate. So it's either if you have radiation, it can be actually to find the plane. So you can make a hole at the base of the prostate because you don't find the correct plane from the beginning when you try to go through the denomious fascia. And the other area which I think is a problem is when you get closer to the apex because the prostate is closer and closer to the rectum as, as you go towards the apex. So that's why, uh, where you have to be very careful, basically, to find the plane. But as you say, you t want to go towards the prostate, because it doesn't really matter in most patients if you have a, if you go too close to the prostate. You don't want to do it, but it's not a big problem. But it's a big problem to, especially if the radiation. If you cut a hole in the rectum after radiation, then you have uh, created a big problem for the patients. Okay. So perfect. So of course. Keep in mind if you're doing surgery in a patient that had previous radiation or not. And I would say also if you are in the first part of your learning curve, avoid doing rectal sur uh, doing a, a radical prostatectomy. If it's your case number 10, for example, in a patient who had previous radiation because it's not the best case to start, to start with. And if you get in trouble, sometimes you can also find some difficulties even if the patient does not ha had previous radiotherapy remember to stay closer to the prostate and then of course uh, going down in planes you, you don't really really uh, understand during surgery. And then if you, you have to manage a rectal lesion, so if you find there has been a rectal lesion during the, the radical prostatectomy, how would you handle it? Do you usually go in all the cases for a colostomy? Do you select the cases depending on the lesion and on the patient? How, how would you handle this. So the, the, the major message is that you should recognize the rectal injury because if the rectal injury is unrecognized, there is a risk of delayed rectal fistula, which is very difficult to manage. So the first message is be sure to identify the rectal injury uh, to be sure that there is no uh, cauterization in the surrounding tissue. And in the majority of cases, you don't need to do a colostomy if the, the tissue is healthy. Of course, in salvage surgery, it's totally different. But if the tissue is healthy, is the repair is correct, you just have to do a primary repair with a double layer, 
closure to be sure to have a good quality closure at the end. And if it's the case, and if there is no uh, uh, malnutrition of the patient, the nutritional status could be important, uh, you can decide to do just this primary closure and no colostomy, no tissue interposition. Are you agree? Uh, I agree, I agree 100%. I mean, the, the most important thing is to identify it because if you miss or if it's a delayed lesion, because sometimes you don't miss it, it's just that it comes after five days because you haven't used cautery or something like that. But then you have a big, big problem. Same thing is if you find it and you suture it and it's healthy tissue, then it's almost no problem. Patient will don't have to stay in the hospital very longer, almost not longer than usual. It's almost like a non-complication. But that's the rectal injury is can be like a lethal complication and it can be almost nothing depending on if you manage to sort of take care of the problem. So I think that's very good advice, you know. There, 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 some, some ones, or some of them, most of them with prostate cancer surgery, you can actually close without a big problem. And do you have any preferred way of, of checking the rectum? So for example, what we used to do is sometimes to fill with the, the aspirator liquid the, the pelvis and then inject air from the rectum, but others use other techniques. Do you have any preferred way of checking it? And when do you usually check it? Because you cannot check it, I mean, you could check it potentially during every surgery, but of course you tend to check it when you are. Uh, you had the, uh, you actually showed the video there, but uh, yeah. So yes. I think that you do what you say, basically. You fill the pelvis with water. The only thing is that if you have a steep trendelenburg, it's difficult to actually to fill, have, the pelvis. fill the pelvis. So sometimes you have to take the patient out of trendelenburg to fill. Mm. And if you ask a colorectal surgeon to come and help you, they will very often do a rectoscopy or exactly. go in or a proctoscopy or whatever you should call it and to see if there is anything. Uh, that's not what I do normally, but to, you also to do a rectal exam. With the, with the to, finger or with yes. the rectal, yes. uh, rectal mm -hmm. catheter. And then, yeah, as you were saying before, actually, the lesion comes more frequently towards the apex. And when yes. you fill the pelvis with the water, it's more difficult to cover yes. the, the apex because yes. usually the... It's, uh, it's higher. Okay, and um, last thing, um, you, you're saying normally if, you, if you're able to close it and to, to recognize it and to close it, the follow-up, I mean, the, the hospital stay doesn't differ too much and does it change the way you, you handle this patient after you suture the rectum in the post, first post-operative days or, or, or do you treat them as, as a, a normal radical, normal case? Yes, um, you, you have to manage differently these patients in post-operative periods. And for example, oral feedings after passing the flatus. Uh, the prolonged catheterization is important, so patients will be discharged with a catheter. And in the majority of cases, we prefer to do a cystography to be sure of the healing of the vesico-erythral anastomosis because in case of unsecure uh, healing of this uh, vesico-erythral anastomosis, this could lead to, to uh, deferred complications. So it's really important to be sure that all is okay uh, in the post-operative period. I agree, 100%. I mean, you don't want to have a urine leak if you have sutured the rectum because that's mm. not helpful. So you have yeah. to be sure that you have a good drainage of urine. But if you have that, you have a very good chance that it will heal. Okay, thank you very much. And the, the last thing that was very interesting is also, as you mentioned, it depends also on, on the status of a patient. So today your discussion was mainly about pelvic surgery in general. Now we are discussing about radical prostatectomy. And sometimes radical cystectomy patients, as we know, can be different because of, of, of other issues that comes perhaps more frequently in this different kind of population. So thank you very much for, for being with us. It was a very interesting uh, discussion and uh, we were pleased to, to, have you, to have you with us. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.